Welcome back. Today we're going to be reading the second story in Five Nights at Freddy's Fazbear Frights number one. Last time we have read Into the Pit. Today we will today we will start book two, To Be Beautiful. So let us begin. Flat and fat. Those were the two words that Sarah thought of when she looked in the mirror, which she did a lot. How could someone with such a curvy belly to be as flat as an iron board everyone else, everywhere else? Other girls could describe their shapes as being like an hourglass or a pier. Sarah was like shaped like a potato. Looking at her bullet nose, her prominent ears, and how all her parts seemed stuck onto her body at random. She was reminded of Miss Mixon Match doll she had as a kid. The one with different eyes, ears and nose, mouths and other body parts you could stuck on her to make her look as hilarious as you wanted. And so that was the nickname she came up with for herself, Mrs. Mix and Match. But at least Miss Mixon Match had Mr. Mixon Match. Unlike the girls at school whom she called the beautifuls, Sarah didn't have a boyfriend or any prospect of one. Sure, there was one boy she looked at, dreamed of, but she knew she he wasn't looking at or dreaming of her. She guessed that he, that she, like Mix, Miss Mixon Match, in her single days would just have to wait around until some equally unfortunate looking guy came along. But in the meantime, she needed to finish getting ready for school. Still looking at her worst enemy, the mirror, she applied some mascara and pink tinted lip balm. For her birthday, her mom had finally given her permission to wear a little light makeup. She gave her dull, mousy brown hair a, fr a furrow brushing. She sighed. It was as good as it was going to get, but it wasn't good. The walls of Sarah's room were decorated with potatoes and models of pop stars she had cut out of magazines. Oh, I'm sorry. Decorated with photos of models and pop stars she had cut out of magazines. Their eyes were smoky, their lips full, their legs long. They were slender, curvy, and confident, young but womanly, and their perfect bodies were wearing clothes Sarah couldn't even dream of affording. Sometimes when she gets ready, she was getting ready for in the morning, she felt as if their, these goddesses of beauty were looking at her with disappointment. Oh, they seem to say, is that what you're wearing, or no hope of modeling career for you, sweetheart? Still, she liked having the goddesses there. If she couldn't see beauty when she looked in the mirror, at least she could see it when she looked at the walls. In the kitchen, her mother, her mom was dressed for work in a long, four-row print dress. Her salt and pepper hair long and loose down her, her back. Her mom never wore makeup or did anything special with her hair, and she had the tendency to put on weight around her hips. Still. Sarah had to admit that her mom had a natural prettiness she herself lacked. Maybe it skips a generation, Sarah thought. Hey, Cupkin, Mom said. I picked up some bagels. I got that kind you like with all the seeds. You want me to pop one in the toaster for you? No, I'll just have a yogurt, Sarah said. Though her mouth watered at the foot of the toasty, everything bagel slender and cream cheese. I don't need all those carbs. Mom rolled her eyes. Sarah, those little yogurt cups you live on, just 90 calories in them. It's a wonder you don't pass out from hunger in school. She took a big bite of the bagel she had fixed for herself. She had put the top and bottom together sandwich style and cream cheese squished out at when she chumped it. Besides, Mom says, her mouth full, you're too much, you're too much too young to be worrying about carbs. And you're much too old not to be worrying about them. Mom wanted to say, Sarah wanted to say, but she stopped herself. Instead, she said, a yogurt and a bottle of water will be plenty to hold me over till lunchtime. 
Suit yourself, Mom said. But I'm telling you, this bagel's delicious. Unlike most mornings, Sarah's actually made it to the school bus in time, so she didn't have to walk. She, ba she sat by herself and watched you YouTube makeup tutorials on her phone. Maybe on her next birthday, Mom would let her wear more than Massacre and BB cream and tint tinted lip balm. She could get what she needed to do for some real contouring to make her cheekbones look more pr pronounced and her nose less ball bones. Getting her brows done professionally would also really help. Right now, she and her teasers were fighting a daily battle against an unibrow. Before first period, she got her science book out of her lock locker. She saw them. They swirled down the hall like supermodels doing a runaway show, and everybody, everybody stopped what they were doing to watch them. Linda, Jillian, Tabafia, and Emma. They were cheerleaders. They were royalty. They were stars. They were who every girl in the school wanted to be and who every boy in the school wanted to be with. They were the beautifuls. Each girl had their own particular brand of beauty. Linda had blonde hair and blue eyes and a rosy complexion. Well, Jillian had fit, fairy red hair and cat-like green eyes. Tabitha was dark with chocolate brown eyes and luxurious black hair. And Emma had chestnut hair and enormous doe-like brown eyes. All the girls had long hair, the better to flip luxuriously over their shoulder, and were slender but with enough curves to fill out their, their clothes with a bust and a hips. And their clothes, their clothes were as beautiful as they were, all, by, all bought at high-end stores in big cities they visit in their vacations. Today they were all wearing black and white. Apologies for that one. A short black dress with a white collar and cuffs for Linda. A white shirt with a black and white polka dot miniskirt for Julian. A black and white stripe. What are they, penguins? A voice cut off Sarah's admiring thoughts. Huh? Sarah turned to see Abby, her best friend since kindergarten, standing beside her. She was wearing some kind of hideous poncho and long, loose floral print skirt. She looked like she should be running a fortune-telling booth at the school carnival. I said they looked like penguins, Abby said. Let's hope there aren't any happy seals around. She made a loud barking sound and then laughed. You're crazy, Sarah said. I think they look perfect. They, you always do, Abby said. She was hugging her social studies book against her chest, and I have a theory about why. You have a theory about everything, Sarah said. It was true. Abby wanted to be a scientist, and all those fe theories would probably come in handy one day when she works in her Ph.D. You know how we used to play Barbies when we were little? Abby said. When they were little, Sarah and Abby had each other a pink carrying case filled with Barbies and their varieties cut clothes and accessories. They had taken turns carrying their cases to each other's house and had played for hours. Stop only for juice box and Grant Graham crackers breaks life had been so easy back then oops yeah sarah said it was funny abby hadn't changed much since those days she still wore her hair in the same brain still wore gold wire frame glasses the braces on her teeth and a few inches of heights were the only differences still when sarah looked at abby she could at least See, the opportunity for beauty was there. Abby had a flawless coffee and cream complexion and, and startling hazel eyes behind those glasses of hers. She took dance classes after school and had a graceful, slender body, even if she hid it under hideous ponchos and other baggy clothes. Sarah had no beauty, and it, tem and it tormented her. Abby had beauty, but didn't care about it enough to be noticed. My theory, Abby said, Gang animated the way she did when she was lecturing. Is that you used to love to play with Barbies, but now you're too old for them. You need a Barbie substitution. Those empty-headed fashionists are, are yours Barbie substitute. That's why you want to play with them. Play? 
Sometimes it was like Abby was still a little kid. I don't want to play with them, Sarah said, though she wasn't sure this was exactly true. I'm too old to want to play with anyone. I'm just admiring them, is all. Abby rolled her eye. What is there to admire? The fact that they can match their eye shells to their outfits? Phew, excuse me. I think I'm going to admire Mary, Kurt, and Rosie Parks. Sarah smiled. Abby had always been such a nerd. A lovable nerd, but still a nerd. Well, you never had much interest in fashion. I remember how you used to treat your Barbies. Abby grinned back. Well, there was the one I shaved bald. And then there was the one with the hair I colored green with my mag with a magic marker. So she looked like some kind of crazy vet supervillain. She wiggled her eyebrows. Now if those teen queens would like to play, play with that way, I might be interested. Sarah laughed. You're the one who's the supervillain. Nope, Abby said. Just a smart aleck. Which is why I'm way more fun than those cheerleaders. Abby gave a little wave and then hurried off to class. Ate lunch. Sarah sat across from Abby. It was a Friday, which was pizza day. And then Abby's tray was one of the school's regular pizza slices. A cup of fruit cocktail and a carton of milk. School pizza wasn't the best, but it was still pizza, so it was pretty good. Too many carbs, though. Sarah had hit the salad bar instead and had gotten a green salad with low fed vi and a green dressing. She liked ranch a lot better than vinegar green, but ranch added too much calories. The other kids at the table were the nerds who hurry through their lunch so they can play card games until the bell rang. Sarah knew the beauties call it the loser table. Sarah stabbed her lettuce with her doll plastic fork. What would you do, she asked Abby, if you had a million dollars? Abby grinned. Oh, that's easy. First I, wait, Sarah said because she knew the kind of thing Abby was going to say. You're not allowed to say you give it to the hum to humane society or the homeless or whatever. The money's just spent on yourself. Abby smiled. Well, since it's imaginary money, I don't feel any guilty. That's right, Sarah said, crunching on the baby carrots. Okay, Abby took a bite of pizza and chewed fully. Well, in that case, I'll use it to travel. Paris first, I think, with my mom and dad and brother. We'll stay in a fancy hotel and go to the Eiffel Tower and the Le Grof and eat at the best restaurants and stuff ourselves with pastries and drink coffee at fancy cafe and people watch... What would you do? Sarah pushed her salad around her plate. Well, I'll definitely get my tea professionally whitened. And I'll go to one of those high-end salons and get my hair cut and color blonde, but a realistic-looking blonde. I'll get skin treatment and a makeover which with really good makeup, not the cheap drugstore kind, and I'll get a nose job. There are other cosmetic producers I like to have, but I don't think I'll, they'll all do them on a kid. And they shouldn't, Abby said. She looked shocked, like Sarah had something really bad. Seriously, you put yourself through all the pain and suffering just to change the way you look? I had my toenails take, my tonsils taken out, and it was horrible. I never have another, another operation if I can help it. She looked at Sarah intensely. What's wrong with your nose anyway? Sarah put her hand on her nails. Isn't it obvious? It's huge, Abby laughed. No, it's not. It's just a regular nose. A nice nose. And when you think about it, does anyone really have a beautiful nose? Noses are kind of weird. I actually have an animal nose better than anyone that people knows. My dog has a really cute nose. Sarah snapped, shot a glance over the beautiful table. All of them have perfect tiny nose, double little buttons, not a potato nose in the bunch. Amy looked over the table where Sarah was looking. Oh, the penguins again? Okay, so the thing about penguins is that they may be cute, but they all look alike. You're a person, and you should look like an individual. Yeah, an ugly individual, Sarah said, pushing away her sound place. No, a nice-looking individual who worries too much about her appearance. Abby reached out and touched Sarah's forehand. You changed a lot in the past couple of years, Sarah. Sarah. We used to talk about books and movies and music. Now you all want to talk about is how you don't like the way you look and about the clothes and hairstyles and makeup you wish you could afford. And instead of having pictures of your wall of cute baby animals like you used to, you got a picture of all those skinny models. I like the baby animals a lot better. Sarah felt anger rising like bile in her throat. 
How dare Abby judge her? Friends were supposed to be the people who didn't judge you. She stood up. You're right, Abby. She said loud enough for the other people. I have changed. I've grown up. And you haven't. I think about adult things. And you still buy stickers and watch cartoons and draw horses. Sarah was so angry that she marched off and left her tray on the table for someone else to clean up. By the time school was over, Sarah had a plan. She wasn't going to set the loser table anymore because she wasn't going to be a loser. She was going to be as popular and pretty as she possibly could be. It was amazing how quickly her plan fell into place. As soon as she was home, she dug into the dresser drawer and where she kept her money. She had $20 of birthday money from her grandma and 10 left from her allowance. It was enough. The beauty supply store was just about 15 minutes walk from home. She could get there, back, and do what she needed to do before her mom gets home at 6. The store was brightly lit with a row and row of beautiful production, I mean, beautiful produ products, brushes and curling irons, hair dryers, nail polishing, and makeup. She had to the aisle had label hair color. She didn't have, she didn't have to have a million dollars to become a blonde. She could do it for around 10 bucks and just look like a million. She selected a box marked Pure Platinum, decorated with a picture of a smile model with long, luminous, white, glowed hair. Beautiful. The woman in the check account had obviously dyed bright red hair and false eyelash that made her resemble a giraffe. Now, if you want your hair to look like a picture, you have to bleach it first. She said, bleach it? How? She asked. Her mom used bleach and water to clean the floor sometimes. Surely this wasn't the same thing. You want to get the you want to get the product side that's back in the aisle too. Cash is here. When Sarah returned with a plastic bottle, the woman looked at her with narrow eyes. Does your mama know you're about to color your hair, hun? Oh, sure. She said. Sarah said, not making eye contact. She doesn't mind. She didn't know if her mom would mind or not. She guessed that she would find out. Yeah, that's good. Then, she said, ringing up Sarah's purchases. Maybe she can help you. Make sure you get the color on good and even. At home, Sarah locked herself in the bedroom in the bathroom and read the directions from the box of the hair colors. They seem simple enough. She put on the plastic gloves that came with the hair dye kit, drop a towel around her shoulders, and worked on the peroxide with her hair. She wasn't sure how long to leave the product site on, so she sat on the edge of the bathtub and played a few games on her phone and watched some YouTube makeup tutorials. First her, first, her scalp started to itch, then it started to burn. It burned as if someone had thrown a handful of light matches into her hair. She quickly typed in her phone, how long to leave product site in hair? The answer was simple, was no longer than 30 minutes. How long has she had left? She dumped in her feet, grabbed a detachable shower head, Turned the water on cold and leaned her shoulder over the tub and started spraying the frigid water smooth in her fierce scalp. When she looked at the bathroom mirror, her hair was stark white, like she had become an old woman way before her time. The bathroom stank of bleach, making her nose run and her waters, her eyes water. She cracked the, the window and opened the bottle of hair color. It was time to complete her transformation. She shook up the hair Color ingredients in the squeeze bottle and swirl the magnets all over her hair and massages in it. She set the alarm on her phone to go off 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and settle in the wait. By the time her mom got her, so was going to look like a whole new person. Sarah played happily on her phone to the alarm buzz, then rinsed off again with a decorative shower head. She didn't bother with the conditioner that came with the hair color kit because she was too obnoxious to see the, the results. She towel off her hair and step on the mirror to see what she, the new her. She screamed. She screamed so loud the neighbor's dog started barking. Her hair was not platinum blonde but sewage green. She fought up Abby when they were little color. Barbie hairs with a green magic marker. Now she was the Barbie. How? How could she do something to make herself pretty and end up being even uglier than before? Why was life so unfair? She ran to her room, fudging herself in the bed and cried. She must have cried herself into a miserable sleep because the next thing she knew her mom was sitting on saying what happened here she looked at me and she could see the shock in her mom's eyes I, I, I was trying to color my hair Sarah sobbed I wanted to be blonde but I'm I'm you're green I can see that mom said well I would say there would be consequences from you coloring your hair without my permission but I think you already experienced some of those you're going to clean up the bathroom though 
But for right now, we need to see what we can do to make you look like a um, Martian. She touched Sarah's hair. Oof, it feels like straw. Listen, put on your shoes. The hair salon at the mall should still be open. Maybe we can fix this. Sarah put on her shoes and stuffed her moss-colored trenches dirt under the basketball bat. When they got in the salon and Sarah yanked off the cap, the stylish gasped. Well, it's a good thing you came 911. This is definitely a hair emergency. An hour and a half later, Sarah was back to having brown hair. Now a few inches shorter because of the stylish had to cut off the damaged ends. Well, Mom said, once they were in the car and the way home, that was a big chunk of my paycheck. I probably should have let just let you go to school with green hair. It would have served you right. Sarah returned home, not in a blaze of blonde glory, but her usual mousy brown still. Helps brown self. Still, when the lunch time rolled around, she resolved that. Even without blonde hair, she wasn't going to sit on the loser table. She served herself with a salad bar and walked right past where Abby was sitting. She didn't need Abby to criticize her today. A knot formed in her stomach as she approaches the beauty's table. They must have decided today was jeans day because they were all wearing cute skinny jeans with a fitting jewel colored top and matching slip-on canvas shoes. Sarah sat down on the opposite end of the table, far away for she didn't seem to be interrupting, but close enough that they would include her if she wanted. She waited a few minutes, expecting one to tell her to go away, but nobody did. She released and hopeful, but then she realized that none of them even seemed to see her. They just kept right on their conversation like she was invisible. She did not say that. Oh, yes, she did. No, yes. But then what did he say? Sarah pushed her salad around the plate and tried to follow the conversation. But she had no idea who they were talking about, or, and she certainly wasn't going to ask them. Probably they wouldn't even hear her if she said something. If they couldn't see her, they probably couldn't hear her either. She felt like a ghost. She picked up her tray and handed toward the trash can, despite getting out of the cafeteria, desperate to get out of the whole school, really. But there were still seven and eighth periods to suffer through. Boring social studies and stupid math. Lost in her suffering, she bumped right into the tall boy, dumped the remains of her salad and crispy white shirt. She looked up at the ocean blue eyes of Mason Blur, the most perfect guy in school, the guy he had always hoped might notice her. Hey, watch where you're going, he said, picking the common signs off his expensive designer shirt. The vigoring covered vegetables had left a perfect oil circle on the chest. Sorry, she squealed, then threw the rest of her salad while Mason wasn't wearing into the trash and half ran out. What a nightmare. She had wanted Mason to notice her, but not this way. Not as the ugly, clumsy girl that which which frizz, frizzy brown hair who gave it a new meaning of the words toss salad. When did everything have to go wrong for her? The beauties never did anything stupid or clumsy. Never humiliated themselves in front of the cute boy. Their beauty was like a suit of armor that protected them from life's pain and embarrassment. And the school day finally dragged to an end. Sarah decided to walk home instead of taking a bus. Given how her day had been, she didn't feel like she would have taken the risk of being in a, being with a big group of kids again. It would be just an inevitable disaster. She walked alone, telling herself she might as well get used to solitude. She was go always going to be alone. She passed the bribing cow, the ice cream stand where the beauties went with their boyfriends after school, laughed as they sat together in picnic tables, sharing milkshakes and sundaes, and of course, the beauties could scarf all the ice cream all they want and not gain an ounce. Life was so unfair. To get to her house, Sarah had to walk past the wreckage yard. It was an ugly expanse of dirt filled with a destroyed corpse of cat, of cars, sorry. They were smashed pickup trucks, smashed SUVs, and vehicles that had been reduced to nothing more than rusted helps of junks. She was sure that none of the beauties would pass a place so hideous on their way home. Their way home. Even though the junker was horrible, or maybe because it was so horrible, she couldn't help looking at when she passed by. She was like a passing driver, junking an accident at the side of the road. The car nearest the fence definitely fit into the heap of junk category. It was one of those big old sedans that only ev very elderly people still, dra still drove. The kind of car Sarah's mom called a land yacht. This yacht had seen better days and only been a light blue. Now it was a mostly rusty orange-brown and some places the brush had eaten all the way through the metal 
and the car's body was so battered it looked like it had been attacked by an angry mod wielding baseball bats. Then she saw an arm. A thin, delicate arm was sticking out of the truck of the car. It was a little white hand with fingers outstretched as if waving hello, or waving for help, like someone who has been drowning. Sarah burned with curiosity. What was that hand attached to? The gate was unlocked. No one seemed to be watching. After looking around to make sure no one was nearby, she stepped inside the wrecking yard. She approached the old sedan and touched the arm. Then the hand, it was a metal. From the feel of it, she found the handle of the truck and pulled it, but the lever wouldn't budge. The car was so dented and bad that the truck wouldn't open and close properly anymore. Sarah followed the story a teacher had read to her class once in elementary school about King Arthur pulling a sword from a stone where no one else could. Could she pull this doll, or whatever it was, from this wrecked vehicle? She looked around till she found a strong, flat piece of a metal that could maybe work as a substitute crowbar. Sarah braced her foot against the car's crumbled bump bumper, slide the metal in inside the trunk door, and pierced upward. The first time she tried, she didn't, it didn't give at all. But the second time, it flipped open and threw her off balance. She fell backward and landed on her butt in the dirt. She stood up and expected the owner of the hand she had she had seen sticking out of the truck. Was it a discarded doll, outgrown by some little girl and tossed in the trash to end up in a dump? The thought of made Sarah sad. She, Sarah pulled the doll from the truck and stood up to feet. Though she had looked, it wasn't sure doll was the right word to describe it. It was a few inches taller than Sarah herself. It was all jointed, so so that its limbs and wa waist looked movable. Was it some kind of mannequin? Marionette? A robot? Whatever it was, it was beautiful. It had a wide, green, long, lashes eyes. Pink cupid bow tie, a pink circles on her cheeks. Its face was painted like clowns, but a pretty clown. Its red hair was pulled up in the twin pink tail on the top of the head. It was, and its body was sleek and silver, with a long neck and tiny waist and a rounded bust and hip. Its leg and arms were long, slender, and elegant. It looked like a robot version of a gorgeous supermodel whose pictures hang up on the walls of Sarah's room.